China has stepped in on the financial system by nationalizing one of the biggest companies in the country, a company that has been swallowing up assets worldwide. So what do you do to prevent the panic in the markets? Well, you just turn off the indicator. Problem solved. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at what has happened in China and talk about why this is very important. Let's begin by looking at this article out of Bloomberg. China's government will take over Anbang Insurance Group and prosecute the founder, cementing the downfall of a politically connected deal maker whose aggressive global expansion came to symbolize the financial overreach of China's debt laden conglomerates. We are not talking about a small company. This is a multi billion dollar corporation. It's huge. Regulators announced that they would take over Anbang for a year, and we know it's going to be longer, remove Wu and charge him with economic crimes, a very general term. Wu, who was the company's chairman, was detained by authorities in June. I covered that here on the channel and also covered their acquisitions. Under Wu, Anbang came to epitomize the voracious Chinese appetite for overseas acquisitions that saw trophy assets snapped up around the world. The full cost of that headlong spree started becoming clear last year as Chinese authorities were alarmed by the mounting financial risks and they slammed the brakes on Anbang as well as HNA Group. These companies were buying Hollywood, they were going out and buying hotels, spending billions of dollars at a time. And so, maybe, the regulators in China were saying, there's too much risk here, there's too much fragility. Or, there was something else I was thinking of. And of course, before I talk about it, I don't know what's happening behind the scenes. I can only speculate. I can only go based on the information that I'm provided here. So think about this for a moment. Now, while many of the companies, the big conglomerates in China, are at least partially state-owned or controlled, I have to think that you have these big conglomerates and they have been buying up real estate, land, and companies in different parts of the world acting as satellites and then you have a crisis and the government needs to step in the state steps in and takes over that company maybe for just a period of time and then they have full control and they have every incentive to keep things as status quo why, what the reasons are, what their plans are, I don't know. I just found it interesting that with every crisis, there is an opportunity. So let's just keep our eyes on that. Just wanted to bring that to your attention. Further along in the article, very quickly, I'll go through this. A team led by the China Insurance Regulatory Commission along with members of the central bank, banking, securities, and foreign exchange regulators is taking over the company starting February 23rd. They're worried that the operations may seriously endanger the company's solvency, so the government stepped in. And that's very interesting to me. Regulators want to solve Anbank's problems without triggering systemic risks. This is a systemically important institution, corporation, conglomerate, whatever. You have to understand that. There will be a domino effect. If this company were to fail, it would have a massive domino effect felt literally all over the world. And another interesting thing was that apparently the company is, quote, stable. And it is consistently being repeated to us time and time again that a certain something is safe, stable, and any form of, you know, rock solid and nothing to worry about, nothing to see here. 
Oftentimes, almost every case, it is the opposite of what they say. If they didn't say this, if they didn't say stable and said, we have some risks, we're worried about them, but we're going to take control of it. That's one thing. But to tell us that everything's okay, I suddenly get really worried. Now, they've been on a buying spree very clearly all over the world. Waldorf Astoria Hotel, about $2 billion. Out in San Francisco, Florida, Netherlands, more Netherlands, South Korea. I mean, they're going all over the world, but it's not some small acquisitions. We are talking about billions of dollars every time. Huge deals that are taking place. Huge deals. So this company, maybe they've taken on too much risk, but it's just interesting to see what has happened. This is um, more of that information here, but just wanted to cover um, very quickly. The takeover will last from February 23rd up until February 22nd of 2019. And they are going to basically be able to acknowledge the situation, regulate, and bring it back to a stable level. This company is or has three hundred million dollars, billion dollars in assets, and it's actually one hundred and thirty-nine on the global Fortune five hundred list. So we are talking about a huge company by any stretch of the imagination. It's huge. All right. So I'll move on here. We saw what happened with the VIX. Recently, obviously, that was a major decline in the stock market in a very short period of time, all caused by the VIX. People all of a sudden, out of nowhere, became worried. Well, China stopped updating its homegrown version of the VIX index, taking another step to discourage speculation in equity-linked options after authorities tightened trading restrictions last week. Here, we have a very big issue. And so, let me just show you that first. Take a look at the VIX, China VIX. Updates stopped after the index surged this month. So while it was at, let's just say, 15 for the longest period of time, it literally doubled in this short period of time. Basically, within less than two months and that is not a good sign that shows the true weakness and this would have probably have gone much higher but they shut it off they shut off this indicator state-run china securities index didn't publish a value an employee who answered the CSI's inquiry line said that the company stopped updating the measure to work on an upgrade. Yes, that's right. Just at the time when everything's going ballistic, that's the time you want to do your upgrade. Not when it was at the bottom, it was low, nobody cared. No, you want to do it when there's panic. Sounds about right to me. And it's not an upgrade. Most of these technological upgrades can be done overnight. For the most part, any sort of technological upgrade overnight is, is usually enough, unless it's some sort of major structural change, which, you know, maybe that's a little unlikely. Who knows? The move was designed to curb activity in the options market, said People familiar with the matter who asked not to be identified discussing private information. It's unclear whether the index will resume. They don't even know if they're going to be able to open this back up. I mean, that's how crazy things are. Look at where it has gone. It's not quite as extreme as the VIX that we are used to, but still, it basically did the exact same thing. All right, now shifting over to Japan. Nippon Life CIO 
Goldilocks scenario near end plans to sell stocks into the rally. So the CIO here is saying they're going to sell Japanese shares when they rise further as the rally in risk assets driven by expectations of a Goldilocks scenario continuing is near the end. So what's happening here is he's saying one that is neither too hot nor too cold. That's what he means by Goldilocks. Are based on the assumptions of three moderations, moderate economic growth, moderate inflation, and a moderate rise in asset prices. And that's basically where the market believes things will head. However, we need to see moderate rising in interest rates. Are they going to do that? What about moderate rising of bank balance sheets? Are we going to see that? Is Japan going to continue to print? That's all that really matters. If they're willing to print, assets will rise. They will devalue the currency as a result, and that's okay. For them, they don't mind destroying their currency. They've been doing it for decades. They've permanently ruined it. It will never be the same again. So let's recap very quickly here. We have a situation in China that is going on right now that is not really being considered to be important enough. And I do believe that a company as big as Anbang could in fact cause a snowball effect. It could bring down the entire market because you'll see a problem there. Now maybe you would then see HNA Group is also having an issue. Okay, so it's two companies. All right, and this is a multi-billion dollar scenario. Now what about the assets that they've been buying? Oh, wait a minute. What if nobody wants to buy them out? What if they're worth less? Their stocks start to drop. Then the whole sector starts to drop in those particular industries. Okay, now we're talking about some situation that's happening in China. The situation in China is getting weaker. Oh no, the economy is starting to go down. Now we're looking at assets that they've purchased elsewhere. We're looking at the Netherlands. How's the economy doing there? How is everything happening? And it just snowballs and snowballs and snowballs and we end up having a major global financial catastrophe. And it only needs to start in one place. You need to get that spark and that's it just a spark. Look at how funny it is when something as fictitious as the VIX could send the market down 1600 points in a short period of time. Imagine, just imagine what would happen if something real started to fall. If an actually an actual a globally significant company started to weaken. That's right we'd have a very, very serious situation on our hands. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, it helps to support the channel, so I do appreciate that very much. Last but not least, if you found this video informative, I know you will find my books, The Money GPS, and my newer release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. You can actually flip through these books. If you go over to Amazon, they have a look inside feature. It's going to allow you to flip through the pages of the books to see if you like them. If you're interested in the audiobook version instead, you can check out Global Economic Collapse in audiobook, and that is available at themoneygps.com. Take care.